Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be starting what's probably going to be a multi-part series on trailer maintenance. So um, we just got back doing about 500 miles on the road uh, with our trailer here and coming back into the driveway my wife said that it was making a terrible sound when I was when I was backing up and so uh, she jumped behind the wheel and then I got out and tried to see if I could source where that was coming from and it turns out that it's one of my brake drums. It looks like something uh, came apart on the inside. Um, so we gotta check that out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you guys uh, the best way to jack up one of these single axle trailers. Uh, this one in particular is a leaf spring axle, which is a little bit different than like the, the, the torsion axles or the tandem axles, but I'll go ahead and I'll cover that for you and I'll show you the best way to get these jacked up. So this is the wheel over here that is making the most noise. And when I get up underneath, I don't know if you can see this, but this is a spring sticking out of the backing plate of this drum, which that's not supposed to be there. That's supposed to be holding something together on the inside that we're gonna check out. So the first things first, you can see this is what I'm talking about. These are leaf springs, okay? It's important that you never jack up the center of the axle to begin with. Uh, whether it's tandem, whether it's a, a torsion axle, leaf spring, uh, it doesn't matter. On a trailer axle, never jack up in the middle. That middle is very thin wall tubing and it can bend right there and then you need a new axle or you gotta take it to somebody and they gotta straighten it back out for you. Ideally, if you could, you would want to jack up on the frame or something, but you can see my frame here is covered with pipes. So there won't be doing, there won't be jacking anything right there. Um, so instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get under this U-bolt cover here, and this is gonna be my jacking point. I could jack up right here if I wanted to, but the uh, base uh, plate of my jack would probably put too much pressure on this leaf spring whenever everything tries to drop down. Um, I could do it with two jacks, that'd be, you know, maybe a little bit better, but instead, there won't be anything wrong with putting a jack right here, okay? Uh, I know most axle manufacturers say jack up from the frame of the trailer. Uh, it's just sometimes it doesn't always work, and most of the people making those rules have never changed a wheel or a tire on a trailer. So let's go ahead. Um, what we're gonna do, I need to lift up my stabilizing jacks over here. I gotta, I gotta get those off the ground because uh, I don't wanna tweak those when I'm lifting this up. Um, but I'm gonna chalk the opposite wheel. I've got it chalked in one direction, I'll chalk it in the other, other direction so that it can't go back and forth. And so get my chalks in, get those stabilizing jacks up, and then we'll go from there. All right, so you can see I've got the jacks over here and that jack over there. I got those up in the air. I've got my wheel chalked on the opposite side and I've got my jack right underneath that base plate right there. So before I get that up in the air, I'm gonna go ahead and break loose these lug nuts here. Just so my wheel and things aren't trying to spin on me when I'm breaking this loose. So I'll break that while it's loose while it's on here. All right, so I got the lug nuts broken loose. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get this tire in the air. And I hope you guys are enjoying that bird in the background as much as I am, because uh, I think he's cheering me on. So I'm barely lifting that off the ground, maybe about an inch, so that I can finish taking these off and then So when you jack this up in the air, there's really no need to get everything, you know, 10 inches off the ground or whatever. Uh, once you clear and your tire rolls, you can pull it off. I've got everything up in the air. I've got the wheel off. Uh, it's time now to open up that brake drum. Before we do that, I just want to point out that I did put a jack stand here and I do have my stabilizing jacks on this side, ran down to where they're almost touching. Um, that's just in case something gives. It can, uh, it can catch that 
before it can fall on me. So, you can, you hear that? I hope, and I'm not making any promises, but I hope that I don't have to get a new brake drum assembly or get this one turned. All right, so this one here, in order to get this brake drum off, I'm gonna have to knock off this grease cut. So I'll knock that off with a rubber mallet, and then there should be a can. So you're just gonna alternate taps, just back and forth. There we go, till we get that off. All right, so I grease these once every season. So plenty of grease in here. So just a pair of needle nose. Again, back and forth. There we go. So that comes off there. Now I should be able to take that off. All right, so this wrench here is an inch and a half. <laughs> I could very easily do this with a crescent wrench. Um, and these usually aren't too tight so I counted my threads so I'm about three and a half threads in on this top here because that's where I'm going to take this back because I don't want a lot of binding on that bearing in there all right so I'm just going to take this off here again after counting those threads I was about three and a half in on the top and this is just a good time I'm coming in here anyway it's a good time to inspect everything Alright, so I can just pull on this and I can take this off. And as I'm doing that, I have brake pieces falling on the ground. The birds and I are checking this out. So it appears what came apart is my adjuster assembly. So here's this part, and here's this other part. It was just cruising around on the inside of that drum. All right, so I really don't know how that came apart, but it did. Boogered that up a little bit in there, so I'll have to clean that back up so it slides on there. Or maybe it was from factory. Maybe it just never went on there in the first place. So I'm going to hit this with uh, just a little bit of sandpaper, maybe a file. You can see where that's messed up. And get this back on here into place. All right, so basically what I done because the ends of here are all boogered up, so I just got a rat tail file and just slowly took it down until I got things to fit. So now this fits back down in there like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that down small so that it's easy to get the drum back over it. So get that over there, get that pulled in there. And then here's my spring. So in my spring, it's gonna go up underneath here like this. Where my pliers go. So, there it is, back together. Gotta make sure this is aligned here so I can get the drum back over it. And then, so basically what this is, is this is just a spreader for your brake shoes. So what I'll do when I put everything back together is I'll, I'll get this going and I'll start to open this up with a, a brake spoon in the back. And what this will do is this will spread these out into the drum and I just want a little bit of friction there and I got to make sure that it's even on both sides, but that makes sure that, uh, you know, my, my brake shoes are grabbing like they're supposed to be grabbing. So, well, let's put this back together. So 
So I'm just putting this back together in reverse order here. It's really important when you're doing this that you try to have things as clean as possible. So I went ahead and wiped everything off and cleaned it all up and then added a new outer coating of grease. All right, and so I'm gonna tighten this up. All right, so I got this tight and then I'm gonna back this off to my thread count, which was three and a half threads. All right, so it's a heck of a lot quieter. So I'm gonna grease this up while I'm in here. So as I'm greasing, I'm just watching the grease that's coming out around those threads right there. So I think that's good. All right, I'm gonna add this back on. Oh, rubber mallet again. So, that looks like it's good to me. You can hear it, you can actually, you can hear the shoes on the inside of that drum there. That's about where I wanna keep it. So one of the first things that I'm going to do before I go out on my next big trip is I'm going to hook this up to my truck and I'm going to take it for a little test drive. And using my trailer brake controller, I'll engage those trailer brakes and that'll help me see if it's trying to pull to the left or to the right. And if that's the case, even not in this situation, in your situation, if that's the case it's pulling one way or the other, whichever way it's pulling, that means that your brake shoes are either too tight or the other side's too loose. So you need to get it up in the air and you need to check that to see which one it is and make the adjustments accordingly. Uh, so if you found that helpful, make sure that you hit that like button. Uh, if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe. All right guys, until next time, like I said, this is gonna be uh, just one part of a few in a trailer, series, uh, trailer maintenance series. Um, make sure that you tune in. All right, thanks for watching.